Gosh, do you hear it? It's relentless. They're absolutely everywhere, and it is hard to record with that much noise. It's funny, it was first the pool for, what, a year? And now, like, six weeks of this. Luckily, it's only a problem in the afternoon. Uh, well, like, from one to six is when it's really loud. And that's when I need to be out here to start filming. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's it going? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It is the start of a pretty big project. One that I've been putting off for a minute. Just because, well, I, had, I, just, I needed to get other things done first. I need to get this whole area right here cleared out. All of this is mostly old pottery. The majority of it's stuff I don't even want anymore. So I'm going to make a pile of things that I'm going to keep. A pile of things I'm going to donate or give away to people, and then broken things if I want to fix them, super fix them. You know, I just I need to get rid of it. This is an old plant stand that uh, didn't work out very well, so it's got to go. And then when this is cleaned up, and I have those pots moved around and organized, I need to get up here onto this hill, clear it out up here into this space, and make that look nice again. I need it to look nice so I can move the bamboo planters back over here to where they belong, and then not even be able to see it anymore. I'll just feel better knowing that it's been done and that things are cleaned up and tidy over there. A cicada just flew right into the side of my head. If you don't know, those bamboo planters usually sit right here and I have all the pottery behind there and whenever I needed pottery, I just had to crawl back behind them, behind the bamboo planters, that is, to get the pottery. But I didn't do it that often. It's mostly small pottery, things I don't even want anymore. So it just makes sense just get it out of This is all supposed to be opened up anyways for drainage that goes from all these houses up here that flows down to a storm sewer at the other end of the yard. At the other end of the yard, I have, well, there's, there's a lot, oh, there's so much going on over here. This whole area needs to get cleaned up, put back together. I don't think I'm going to bother pulling weeds because this is the tortoise garden. All these lava stones are normally going from here and across as a little fence in the tortoise that I, I have a tortoise, you don't know, his name's Colby. This is where he spends his time outside during the summer, at least when I'm not around. When I'm around, he just roams the yard, but this is like his safety pen over here. So I think to get things started, I'm going to start with getting everything over there cleaned up and working my way down here. I know I said I was going to do a bunch of stuff up there, but that may have to wait because I did remember it is supposed to rain. I'm working with the noise of the cicadas here. It's just pure chaos right now. I also have this aviary that needs to get put together. Probably going to be putting the aviary over here. I used to have a potting bench over here, and when I uncovered it a few weeks ago, it was, it was rotten, so I got rid of it. And now I have this big open space of an iguana over here that needs a larger enclosure. And overall, I think it'll just be a fun thing to set up. Whether or not I'll be able to get the whole thing done this week, I don't know, there's a lot going on this week, but at least get things rolling so there it is there's the intro a very long one with all the noise that's going on probably just going to do a before and after or maybe record a few things here and there while i'm in the process but hopefully when we come back there'll either be a montage or something or a lot of this will be gone it'll be clean Oof, barf what a mess i said barf because a freaking fly just flew right into my mouth what is going on <laughs> eating alive over here it's another reason this needs to get cleaned out. I need to get all this debris and everything out of this area. It's just this pot situation I had going on. Just see, look at it. It became a trap for leaves and debris. It's really hard to get in there and get that stuff out. And it has become a breeding ground for those black flies that are out here that just bite the crap out of everybody. Glad to have that done. Well, okay, I'm not done, obviously. But that's the bulk of it out of here. There are at least 20 million ants in here every single thing i pick up there's been an ant nest or centipedes this one okay that's not too bad i don't really mind the ants they're just you know annoying I don't really want ants crawling over myself you see how deep that is that's gonna be a lot of stuff to get in there and get out these are the three pots that i am definitely keeping i didn't get rid of all the other ones i'll show you the ones that i decided to keep in a minute is there not a drainage hole in this thing really huh Okay, well, good thing that was stored upside down. Need to remember that. I have a family member with some planters that match these. So I'm going to see if they want them. 
these are just a smaller version of the big ones that they have. Looks like there's an orchid pot back there. Oh, that's the big orchid pot that goes to this. I was wondering where that was. Okay, hey, good to know. The pieces can be glued back together. Yeah, not a lot that I'm keeping over here. The majority of the stuff that was stacked up over there were pots that, like the ones that you get when you buy a bromeliad or a house plant that don't have drainage holes in them. I just pulled an ant off of my ear. But you can see these are still some ants that are hanging in there from when I pulled them up. They're dirty, it need to be cleaned up. I don't know if y'all remember these. These are the acrylic pour pots I did on the channel many, many years ago and never sealed them. It was my first time acrylic pouring. Didn't know that that was a thing. They've lost their luster. And then these are not technically bonsai pots, but they're shell additions I'll likely use for bonsai. And this one I have sentimental attachment to. This one right here is just a fun round planter. The problem is there's an Ikea water bowl, a dog bowl, that's it's stuck in there. I can't, it doesn't, it doesn't want to come out. It doesn't, I'm not quite sure how that got in there, but it doesn't want to come out. So I'm going to have to figure that one out. This doesn't have drainage in it. All the pots that I keep that are smaller, I have a rule for myself. There's a small shelf in the garage that has not a lot of space on it. And uh, whatever I keep has to fit on that shelf. I'm going to have to make some choices here, but that's okay. There, I think that this will be fine. These will fit. Need to get a hole dug in that one, drilled in this one. Keep it upside down until I get around to doing that. So that's it. That's all I'm keeping as far as the small pots go. That's all. That's all that's left. Just need to get these pulled out of here. And uh, get all this junk cleaned out. I suppose this is just a job for a rake. And a tarp. I don't have a tarp. I, I think I'm going to have to go to the hardware store tomorrow and get a tarp. My tarp's broken. It doesn't really make sense to me to pull this all out onto the patio and make a bigger mess. I'd rather scoop it onto a tarp and drag it around. If there are going to be so many more clippings and things that it would be nice to be able to do that all in one go. So I get to pick up tomorrow when I have a tarp. I, I know I was supposed to be done for the night, but I was inside going up the stairs and I found a cute little jumping spider. This is Henry. And there goes Henry. I know some of y'all are afraid of spiders, but jumping spiders, really? I mean, come on. They're goofy little floof spiders. They're not ones you gotta worry about. In fact, most spiders you don't have to worry about, but I mean, come on. I mean, look at that face. If I can hold, I, got, I need a tripod for this. Look at that face. He's cute, and he's fuzzy, and he's floofy. Not gonna hurt anybody, and he's free now. I need to get back to what I was doing inside. Side quest. Wednesday's video repotted all these plants over here and some more. There were more. Sorry, the sun's on my screen. Is this, can you see any of what's in front of you? I hope so. A couple of bananas, croton, very much needed it, right? Clearly, it's not looking great. The recurvifolias over here, I didn't really give them the attention that I think these things deserve. Look at how great they're looking. I love the way they look in these pots. I know they're just black nursery containers. That's just my preference because it makes it easier to move them in and out of the house when we have the cold snaps and I don't risk breaking a nice ceramic pot. And I generally have pots that these can slide into that look better or, you know, there's always plenty of plants to pile around them to make them look nice. It's just good. I think they look nice. One thing I love about the recurvifolias is they're hardy to like zero degrees for the most part. A hard freeze that's icy, that can do them in, but generally everything underground will survive. I just love the monopodial growth, the soft weeping habit that they have on them. They remind me a lot of some of the cordelins or dracaenas. These guys down here. I'm just going to go ahead and call them the spike plants. What not? I'm just going to call them by their common name so that we don't have to go over all of that. This is usually how they're labeled at the nurseries. Vigorous growers. Also pretty dang cold hardy. Not as cold hardy as those recorvifolia yuccas are, but what they lack in cold hardiness they make up for in vigor. These things, they can grow. If you give them a nice wide pot with a lot of moisture and good rich soil, they can get these really cool thick trunks on them. They'll get massive. They turn into trees. It's not my goal for these plants, but I want them to, you know, max out around seven feet and then you have to cut them and then they'll branch out from the sides. They just need to be a maintainable size to put into the growth space. I got three of these this year because I can leave them out for a lot of the year. I'm gonna treat them like I do my potted windmill palm. So below 15, maybe 20, I'll move them in. If there's gonna be ice or anything on them, I'll move them in. Probably end up spending like, I don't know, a month, two months max in the growth space. Otherwise, they'll be outside. But you see what the problem is here, right? These are so incredibly underpotted. They're growing at an angle because they keep falling over. And they're still at a size where that 
crookedness that's in there would be very easy to fix. And I still have all this potting soil mixed up over here from the video that just came out before this one where I was repotting a bunch of things. I went ahead and I added back to it. All I had was a moisture control mix and I figured that's fine because there's a lot of chunkiness. Cut myself off. I added to it because it was going to drain, I think, just a little bit too fast. What was left in here was mostly for yuccas and plants that like a ton of drainage in their root ball. And these like drainage, but they also like a good consistent moisture, which the recurvifolia is pretty much the same story with those. Nice big pot, lots of moisture, but it needs to drain really well and organically rich and you get a nice thicker, healthier looking plant, which is not what I ended up doing with mine. You saw them, they just look like the ones you'd stick in the ground and never look at again. But I'm okay with that because it's something that's exotic looking for where I live. So that's the side quest, you get it. I have three different pot sizes here. This is a 10 inch container. I think that this is a number two pot from Monrovia, which is kind of a unique size. And then this down here, which I think is a 10 gallon, might be a seven. So I'm going to put them into all different sizes. The main thing with these is that I want to be able to get these others to sit into decorative pottery. I'm not gonna plot them up into the decorative pottery, but I want them to fit in there. This pot doesn't fit in the majority of my container, so it's always gonna stick out like this. They're three different sizes because I wanna see what the three different plants do. I think you can already imagine what's probably going to happen here. The wind almost took that out. There's some storms blowing in. The big one is probably going to end up growing the most, right? I'd say that's a fairly safe assumption. If it's early enough in the year, you can really, really put these into fairly large containers. They'll root out into them. They're very vigorous. So, yeah, there's the side quest nobody asked for. I'm waiting for the tarp. I had to order it. I can't leave the house. It's a long story. I can't make it to the hardware store today, and I need that tarp to get going over here and... That's where you just come out and do something. Can't get much else done over there until I have something I can lay all the clippings and muck onto because this new patio, <laughs> it, just, it stains like crazy. Oh yeah, look at that. Those look great, don't they? Especially this one, they look so much better when you get them into a nice large container. I would say it was a good buy because <laughs> I didn't have to pay very much for them considering how big they were. When I was doing all of the Monrovia orders, getting the Acanthus and the Baby Grand Magnolia, that's this one right here, the Baby Grand, you know that one, the awesome, you know what I'm talking about? You could order these from Monrovia and you know, they'll ship them to whatever nursery that is available according to their website. And uh, I debated getting one of these in their large container, which is a number seven. That's how that was labeled. So it would have been a little bit bigger. It might've been a number five. I think it was a number five pot. Whatever the case, it would have been $110. And I just kept envisioning that whatever comes in is probably gonna look like one of these. Difference being that it, it will be something that is rooted into that container. But guys, it, you know, it's only gonna take a couple months to root this thing into that pot. By the end of the season, this thing stays watered well and fertilized properly. It should be at least three to four feet tall. They really take off. So I'm glad that I didn't do that, but I am still curious. I'm like, had I done that and gotten the one that's already potted up into one of these, would it actually have a little bit of trunk on it and be up high? No, something tells me probably not. I'm gonna keep them facing away from the sun to help correct their wonk. That stretch that they have, I think is fresh enough that they should be able to correct it on their own in no time. This one right here is a little bit more extreme. Almost got a 90 degree going on there, but I still, I think it'll be okay as long as I keep it away. It's the oxen and plant hormones are gonna say, hey, you need to go that way. Okay, well, that was a fun deviation. Hopefully we'll cut back with a tarp or something. I don't, it's supposed to storm for the rest of the week, so I don't really know what's gonna happen, but hopefully it'll <laughs> be something involving getting that area cleaned up and getting the aviary put together. Hey, baby, how you doing? It is in beautiful. And it is and it's a beautiful morning. Cicadas are doing their thing. That's just the way things are going to be for the next several weeks. The rain last night, it was the good kind of rain where it washed everything off. There was a lot of wind that blew a lot of the junk and pollen out of the trees. I was having trouble breathing out here. I mean, not truly, you know what I mean? Like a hoarse throat and an occasional cough. Like you'd get that tickle when I'd be around the certain weeds in the garden. There are some weeds I need to mask up and pull. That's a whole different story. You know, with storms, sometimes it's just, it's brief, but tragic. <laughs> it does no good at all, but these were the storms where the temperature was just right. There weren't huge tornado threats. We just barely missed that. Everything washed clean. It was enough water to make the plants happy instead of the kind where it's just like a 
brief downpour and then lots and lots of wind that tears everything up. Mess the pool up. There's a lot of junk in there, but I don't care about that. Not one bit. If it means I get to take a day off from watering, I'm good with that. The plants, they always look so much better with real rain as opposed to the fake rain, you know, the hose rain. It's just not the same. They look so much better when they get that nice cleansing of the real stuff. I can breathe better and it's not unbearably hot. It cooled things off. It's like 72. It feels really nice today. That's a, an unnecessary update. The tarps here showed up this morning. Nice and thick one. Hopefully it'll last longer than all the others. All the other tarps I've been buying, I was just getting the... Not... Okay. I, how am I going to say this? It's not that I was buying the cheapest tarps I could find. It's that I wanted little ones that were like 4x4, four 6x6. Four, six six, and they just were always very thin and inexpensive. Like those two things just went together. I haven't been able to find a little tarp that's really nice and thick. This is an 8x10, which is bigger than what I would prefer, but I figure it's a higher quality. It's supposed to wash off very, very easily. Those other ones, like they get dirt on them and it sticks to them. You have to scrub them clean, which I never did because they were just tarps. With this, I'm just assuming that it'll be easier to maintain and I can keep it folded up and be able to pile more things on without worrying about scratching it up. That's a, it's, it's too much talk about a tarp. There's a tarp here. I got a new tarp. Oh, hey bud. What are you doing? These things, they're constantly oh, turbo, uh, turbo, be nice. That's your friend. That thing spent 13 years underground so it could come out for a few weeks. Let's let it live its best life. He's been very good with the cicadas. He's only picked up a couple and he's spat them back out. He mostly plays with them the way he plays with kittens and puppies. Like he lays down and he lets them prickle on his face. When they prickle his face, he just kind of jolts back and he's like, hey, why'd you do that? And then mostly leaves them alone. The corpses and the little shells from when they pupate, that's a different story, but he can eat them. It's fine. But, but you are going to have to move. Go on. You can't be there because when I stand up, you might get squished. There you go. You go over there. Find yourself a girlfriend or a wife. You need Jesus. Okay, so here's my area. Big mess. Need to get that cleaned up. I think... Yeah, I'm going to have to move all these. I can't keep these over here if I'm going to get the tarp spread around. Where can I even put those? I need to find a shady spot for all these plants. Because everything that's over here needs to stay in the shade. So you, you're not... Let's, can you... Let's go over there. Good boy. <laughs> here you go, Turbo. Have the two little fried eggs right here, and they will fry if I don't keep them in the shade. One of the other reasons I'm cleaning this area out isn't... Well, I mean, obviously, it just needed it badly, right? But I also, I still have plants on the shelves inside, and this is pretty much the only spot I can put all of those aeroids and things that I should, I don't, I shouldn't even have, to be honest. I've been in that growth space looking at a lot of those aeroids, just going, why do I have these? They're going to get huge. They're going to take a lot of space out here, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grow them out for another year and see how I like them before I start to cull the pack. I just don't want little pots all over the place. I've never been a fan of that look. Like, that spathophyllum over there, that bugs me. I don't like that. That needs to go somewhere else. I like for things to have places. And in the acclimation period, when you move things out, that's just something I have to deal with. They gotta go in the shade, so there will be lots of pots and things strung up back here on the walls. The tie's gonna go up there by the pine tree in a couple of weeks. So ideally what I would be doing is just taking these and setting them back there. But that space isn't cleaned out yet. You get it? You see what's going on here? Like a make a mess to clean a mess sort of situation here. I guess that's not really what's going on. I think that maybe back here I could tuck these back here. I'm recording this. Well, because it's a vlog in two, so I don't forget where I'm putting these plants. Hello, Kesia. Just got that repot. This one's so pretty. I didn't talk about it enough in that video. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, that video that just came out. I had that scheduled to come out at 11. I need to get online, make sure that happened. I always do this. On Wednesdays, I end up filming. When the video comes out, sometimes I'll be out vlogging or something's going on, and then I forget that there's a video coming out as I'm filming the next video, and then I forget to put it out on Instagram because YouTube isn't great about notifying people. So it's important that I get on there so that other people know when the videos come out. Okay, you two, I think these might not, I'm just going to say there might be a problem. They're not going to be a problem, I just, they're bigger. Where am I going to put you? You know, they'll scorch if they get afternoon sun. 
maybe I'll just right here. Just for right now, that's fine. Yeah, aren't they pretty? Shomanthi did so well this winter. Had to spray them a little bit, but not as much as I have in other years. They look really great. I didn't even keep them in the pond. They still stayed pretty strong. Don't get me wrong, I had to clean a lot of dead stuff out of them when I moved them out here, but there's lots of good stuff on the inside. Okay, then I think I need to move the glider, get the tarp set up, and start scooping. But where do I move the glider? I want to push it down there. I don't like for that pathway to get too narrow. It doesn't seem safe. Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just swing it out. That's probably the best thing to do is just to give it a turn. It doesn't take much. It's very lightweight. Yeah. Okay, so now the issue isn't that the path's too narrow. There just is no access to the path. I'm sure that's much more safe. This area over here has been buried for several years, so I'm excited to see what kind of treasures I might find. I already see a fish net. Who knows why that's there? The orchid pot. Talked about that before. And how is this not full of water? There's no drainage hole. It rained a bunch last. Maybe I do need a water. Are you, guys, are you thirsty? I wish they could talk to me. It's a great bonsai pot if you want to do like a trailing wisteria. I think I had a lantana or a bogan villa in this at one point. I'm going to put that up. No, that's a bad idea. Put it down there. Some more storms coming this afternoon. Wouldn't want that to get blown over. What is this? Looks like a miniature shepherd's hook of some kind. I have... I don't know, I'm sure at some point I had it. You know what? I bet it's from when I used to have all those Vanda orchids. And I had lines set up back here. The spot used to get a lot more sun when the trees were smaller, and that's where I kept my orchids. So that would make sense. This is in perfectly good condition. I'm sure somebody would be able to use this for something. What kind of shape is this fishnet in? Uh, it's got some holes. Not too bad. I wouldn't use it for the fish tanks. It's probably out here before scooping the fountain and the pool skimmers would be my guess. And it doesn't look great, but I think that that's decent enough to use for the pool. And then the orchid pot. I wonder what's in there. I should probably actually maybe start scooping before I try and unearth that because I also have to get all these drip lines out of the way in here. But I'm anxious to see my pot. It's been a long time. Any snakes or centipedes? Don't think so. I think we're good. Alright, get this bag moved out of the way and put back up over here. Where did I have that? Right there? Yeah, I think that's where. Yeah, that's good. Other one's still having a soak. Got a couple of pots here. This one. Remember that? The 3D printed one? I don't remember why that's out here, but it is. Let me put that back up in my office. That's where that goes. Put that over here with the other pots. Always pots. So many pots. It doesn't help we had a storm last night and that blew a bunch of stuff around. I have my recycling stack over here from everything I've been getting potted up and the, the last few oh the last few like, I already forgot the thing that I was supposed to do I need to go make sure the video came out and get back to this in just a minute this is something I have wanted to do for such a long time I know it seems simple it's just raking there's nothing crazy going on here but just knowing that there's been this like leaf berg <laughs> that's what you'd call it just all kinds of junk coming up and cluttering in here over the years it's been bothering me I'm trying my best to get in here and get out anything that's not something that would go into the yard waste so that i can just take this whole tarp when i'm done and dump it right in the bin it's just leaves there's nothing that crazy about it but getting them out of here it's going to be so good so good and as much as you know i like nature i don't want to be outside and hate on insects and everything but as i mentioned this has become sort of a breeding ground area for those black flies. Like, I don't like to be over here in the evening because they just bite you like crazy. Having this stuff out of here is going to help. As long as the ponds, not the pond, the fountains over there, it's probably always going to be a thing. Trying to keep it clean makes a big tip. I'm going to get this cleaned out and move on. And speaking of orchids, I know, we weren't speaking of orchids, but look, we've got a nice spike here on this Oncidium. This one is raspberry chocolate, I think. Baby raspberry, yeah, baby raspberry chocolate. Has a nice fragrance to it. This thing's been sturdy. I've had this sitting out here for like, I don't know, two months. I brought it home and I knew that it was so kind of early, but figured as long as we're not gonna have any frosts, the temperature shifts should make it happy. All my other sherry type 
of Obsidiums have enjoyed that. These have a very fragrant flower and they're a super easy orchid. Unless you're a very heavy handed water and don't have much sunlight. If you like to water them a ton, then that could be a problem. I don't, for an orchid, how about that? For an orchid, pretty easy orchid. Look at what I got done. Sorry for the deviation, but flower spikes are always exciting. So much has been pulled out. There are a lot of roots in there. Over the years, soil collects back there and then roots from, I don't, you know, all of the things start to spread. So I'll have to hit that with a shovel at some point. I'm going to wait to do that until I'm ready to come in with a big load of gravel and fill this area. And the main thing is that I got the bulk of the debris out and now there's a cleaner, safer way to get up onto the hill and get some cleaning done up there because it's, it's just a disaster up there. Okay, and now... I can prune. This is just you know, random stuff that's been showing up in over here over the last probably year or two since I've been able to get back here and do much of anything. I just terrified a cicada. Oops. Oh, look at that. Found a ball. Oh boy, Turbo. Look at that. Turbo, look. Big dirty ball. Throw it in the pool. There you go. Get that cleaned up. I should not have done that. He was just starting to dry off. Now he's going to jump in the pool and get all wet again. I feel kind of bad going in here and cutting this stuff out. There's cicadas all... I mean, there's a big tree up there for them to hang out in, so I probably shouldn't feel bad. I'll, I'll just be careful and do my best not to hurt them. Oh, sorry, sorry, as I knock one off onto the ground. There we go. That's better. Look at how much more open that is. Like I said, when it's time to landscape this... It, oh, hold on. Let me start over. There we go. That's better. Like I said, I'll come in and get all the other stubs and dead wood out of here when it's time to landscape this area. I'm waiting for some more plants. Selections are starting to change at the nurseries and I want to be very specific and intentional about what I put back here and you know that's it. this is it. This is this is good enough. I have a tendency when I take on a project to uh, I don't want to say overcomplicate things. It's just I think about things from a lot of different directions and all of the different levels that go into it. So for example, the project of just cleaning out the old pottery and getting the leaves out of here could have very easily turned into, all right, well, I'm gonna clean this stuff out and then midway through, I gotta go through and redo the drip system because that's a big project that I need to get done this year. I'm pulling up all the drip and starting over. That'd be like a three-day deviation <laughs> doing something like that before moving on to getting on top of the hill just to cut a few things down and that's just doesn't seem productive so I'm trying to just remember objective here was to clean this out so I can get these pots moved back over get the yard waste ready to go out because it's a day that yard waste goes out so it just makes sense to get all my pruning and stuff done that was necessary for the spot done right now and then move on with cleaning up over here so that I can get the aviary put together which by the way I don't know if I'm even going to put the aviary over here I've been thinking about it it, that's where I want it to ultimately end up. When it comes time to put it together, I'll explain more. I think it needs a more solid base. So I might build something for it and for the time being, keep it on the patio. I just explained, that was everything. I just explained the whole thing. Or not even just the drip. I was tempted to say, okay, well, I got this done. Now let's go to the hardware store and buy several hundred pounds of gravel. Come back here, I'll dig this out and retrench this whole thing. That was not the objective today. These are all separate projects. I can trench that out and get it all cleaned up at the time when it's appropriate to do that. I can do the drip when it's the time appropriate to do that. Right now, this is what, I'm mostly talking to myself and just explaining my thought process of how I'm kind of controlling the ADD by just, I don't know, I guess I'm, what I'm saying is I think I'm saying focus better as I'm rambling <laughs> about trying to stay focused. You get it, and part of it's just to be funny. I mean, it's a vlog, try and take things lightheartedly. I'm gonna get this pulled out of here. Need to get that thing out of its nursery can. Can't put that into the, compost and it's a yard waste system, whatever they cut. It's a yard waste company. They come and pick up stuff and they compost it. So they're not going to want that plastic pot. I don't know what happened to that you. I watered it and the next day it turned brown. I, it, I didn't want to live apparently. There's nothing I can do for it if it doesn't want to live. And I can already tell you I am loving this tarp. The other ones that I had used, they would start to shatter when I would pull them around. There's nothing to hold on to. I like this. Nice thick tarp. Okay, I'm gonna do some more scooping over here, get the bamboo planters put back where they need to go, and then move on down over here and start picking stuff up over there. Oh, it's so good to be able to see the bamboo planters again. You can see one of these things is not like the other, right? 
Got a lot of die off on the inside of this one. And it was the one that was buried further into the spruce. I'm gonna assume that it just wasn't getting enough water. That's on me. Should have been more on top of that. I mean, I was giving it water, but clearly not enough. The, a lot of the stuff that's died off, that's like fully dead, is stuff that died off in the winter time. And then the rest of it, like, it's, it's just now dying off. It still has some flex to it. So it could end up flushing back out. I don't really know. I'm just happy that they're out. Look how big they got. These things are getting absolutely massive. I know a lot of y'all are not fans of the bamboo planters, but I love them. I think they're fun, they're airy, they're graceful, low maintenance. Don't have to replant them every single year with some kind of tropical. It's just nice always having something out here with that nice green structure. And yeah, I cover them. I started doing that last year and wrapped the pots with heat cables. If it drops below zero, that only happens pretty much once a year. And it's not that hard to do. I think it's well worth it to keep them looking good. Still need to get these underplanted. They have grown all the way up to the front of their containers, so I don't really know what I'll be underplanting them with. It's probably gotten to a point where I'm just gonna have to like pop little things I can get in six packs in there. I don't think I'll be able to get anything large in there, which is fine. I'm okay with that. The pots are really pretty. It'd be nice just to be able to sit back and look at those containers and appreciate what those look like. Looks like I missed a pot over here. Feels so good to have that area cleaned up and tidied. Well, at the beginning stages of cleaned up and tidied. So it'll be an adenidia palm that goes in the middle here in a couple of weeks when those come back from the greenhouse. I may have to do some adjusting to make that work because these have gotten so full. Oh, I don't know. That's something to deal with when it's time to deal with for now. This just looks so much better. I have an alpine planter down here that I could go ahead and move over into the spot. This is where it was, but I don't know. I don't think... I don't think that's something I should be thinking about right now. Next step is to come in here. This is not a big deal. I think just do a before and after with this. I know it looks pretty bad, but it's really, it's a few bags of potting soil and mostly just debris that's blown over from the storms and a few plants overwintered that did not make it. Some hydrangeas, the roses are okay. Some pots that I'm donating. So this is, yeah, I'll just do a before and after with this. this hopefully we'll come back and this will be cleared out and get the lava stone laid back out and it'll look better again. See? Fresh and clean. Okay, but there's lots of weeds and I left the miracle Grow bags in the ground here because there's a hole there that I wanted to stay filled in. This will have a big queen palm that goes into the ground, partially into the ground, right where those bags are. I don't feel like digging the hole back out. They make a good filler and it would give me something stable to walk on while I was moving things out of here. And I think that the edge of that pot comes over to these lava rocks. I don't know. I have a couple more of these big lava stones so I can add to it. When that palm tree gets here that becomes part of the wall to help contain the tortoise when nobody's around to supervise. Still have some plants over here and uh, they're going to stay here for right now. I'm not pulling the weeds. These are for Colby. The tortoise, he's going to come in here. He's going to munch these down. He's going to love them. I bring them out here just about every single day as long as it's warm enough and he mows down on me. You can see where he's gone through and gotten a lot of what's going on right here. And there's, it doesn't seem to like the violets as much, but the strawberries and all the grassy stuff, he's been having a great time with it. And once he's out here, I'd say in a week or two, when he's out here full time, I guess he won't be out here full time until the big queen plum gets here to fill in that gap. But once we get to that point, that'll all be gone within a few days. Tortoise does a good job of cleaning things up. Doesn't it look good? Yeah, I know it looks messy because of the weeds and the bags sitting there, but like I said, I want to keep that hole filled in and give me something stable to walk on when I was moving around over here. This is nice. Okay, so the aviary, that was going to go right here in this spot, and I still ultimately would like for it to go in that spot, but I've been seeing a lot of people who buy this particular one that I got. I guess I'll it to you now. It's in a box. So there really isn't. Not much to see. just says paw hat on it. It's an octagonal like aviary thing. Not the highest quality. I just kind of considered this something I wanted to try out for a couple of years, but I'm thinking it would be a good idea to either, well, no matter what, I was going to say it'd be a good idea to either level out the base and put down flagstone. I'd be doing that regardless, but some people who are buying it, that's what I was saying before, are building bases for them to lift them up off of the ground. I might do that. I'm going to look into it a little bit more. Regardless, I need to put it together and uh, it will have to have wire mesh buried underneath it so that 
the iguana, which is what's going in there, cannot dig out. And at nighttime, I'll probably be keeping Colby in there too, which means I will probably have to reinforce the bottom with some metal flashing. I'm thinking, I don't know. We'll get to that when it's time to get to that. It is starting to rain. So just barely met why I haven't made it yet. I gotta get all this stuff into the yard waste and get that out to the curb. But I, don't know, I feel good about this. Hopefully tomorrow morning or later this afternoon, it will be nice enough to get out here and start putting together the aviary, which like I said, we'll probably end up keeping on the patio for now, just because it has to have a wire mesh underneath it. I didn't prepare for that and I might be building a base for it. So for now I want to put on solid surface so that nothing can dig out. Nobody can dig out. You know, the iguana, don't want it to be able to get out of there. And yeah, this is good. Things are starting to come back together over here. The pile of pots, whatever I have over here, I think are all pots that I'm donating or just giving away to friends. So they'll just hang out here and as summer goes by and people come over and they want to take them, they'll take them. I figured I'd just leave them there for right now. And I'm starting to have this late cleaned up for the palm tree delivery, which is still two weeks away. So not quite something to get all that excited about yet, but I'm just glad to have the things put where they need to go so the palm trees can be popped into place. I think I should, side quest might be happening here. I should probably repot this Dracaena. It needs it badly and the stuff I have in the gorilla cart would be pretty good for it. I'm gonna try and remember to do that tomorrow. Yeah, this thing sucks. <laughs> I'm not likely to recommend this and I haven't even finished putting it together yet. Instructions aren't terrible. I watched a video before I even took it out of the box from, I don't know, maybe it was a couple years ago, two years old. And the people who made that video made the video because the instructions were so horrible. I really appreciated that. This looks like a different set of instructions. Just putting this out there in case somebody wants to buy this Paha hexagonal aviary thing. Uh, just to start with, maybe I should finish putting it together first. Should I do that? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm taking a breath, so I think this would be a good time to talk about it. This wood, it's spongy, does not feel durable. The holes on the roof, nothing was pre-drilled, so it was just kind of like, you gotta guess where to put everything, right? Because there's no pre-drilled holes. So when it comes to aligning all of these very important parts properly, it's just, you know, hopefully it works out. However, it was still relatively simple to get that together, just uh, a bit annoying. So it might be easier if you have a second person because there's hinges on the inside. You can see it like this. So you lay it out flat, and then when you get to doing the last piece, you need to pull it all together to get that put in place. But otherwise, it wasn't terrible. It's just quality-wise, I don't know. I don't see this being something you can keep outside for very long. It's not in a humid climate where you have rain and stuff like that, but we'll find out. It wasn't horribly expensive. It was certainly cheaper than going and buying all the lumber myself and building something like this from scratch. Uh, also, the wire on there, I do not think would be safe to use with hook bills. Mesh for hook bills. They can chew on it and there can be things that are toxic in there. I'm putting an iguana in this, so I'm not worried about all that, but just throwing that out there the material wise it has that smell to it that the anodized stuff you know, I, I don't know don't, don't worry about all that do your research if you have a bird you want to put a bird in one of these things that's what i'm saying huh well it's got some flaws for what it costs i think this was 220 it was on sale i think these were like 250 to 350 depending on where you get them from just with the cost of lumber i guess probably could pull this off for three to five hundred bucks with good lumber and good materials and roofing and everything and a lot more time you can probably pull it off for 200 too if you got connections or know where you can get the right kind of wood you know maybe you got connections i don't know it's been a while since i shot for lumber like a couple years you know a couple years ago lumber was much more expensive it's still pretty pricey though that hasn't changed much uh i'd give it a couple years <laughs> probably ways to reinforce it um Maybe even some coatings that could go on the wood to help protect it because it is soft. There are some spots where the roof screws in here where it wasn't flush, right? Like right here. So the screw it didn't actually go in up there. Well, it did, but then it just pulled back out because the wood is so spongy and soft that the screw doesn't really take grip to it. So I have to be very careful moving it. When I do move this over there, if I end up moving it over there <laughs> to the tortoise guard, that whole area I just ended up cleaning up, I will definitely have help. Probably one person on each corner. Probably take the roof off of it when I do it just to be safe. Maybe paint the wire black. So it'll be more transparent. I don't know. I think it's cute. So when it comes down to that, it looks cute. I think it looks better than 
what I have now, and there's a lot more space in there. I said, I'm not gonna be able to put the tortoise in here at nighttime without putting some kind of metal flashing around the bottom, because he'll tear that up. And this also couldn't go over there right now because some sort of wire has to be put down on the bottom so that nobody can dig out. The door on this, at the little locky mechanism, it's, it's use, what, what's the point? I don't understand this. I don't know, maybe I'm not using it right, but I've used these things before. It's not that complicated. You're supposed to be able to just push that down there and it should lock in place, but maybe it's not going far enough. I don't know, I mean, it just pops right open. So that's going to have to be replaced, which I would probably be doing anyways, because the guanas are pretty strong. The wood itself, I think I mentioned this, it's so soft, it actually feels like the wood that parrot toys are made out of, like the wood that your birds are supposed to destroy for enrichment. That's something to keep in mind. If you want to do this with a bird, maybe a doves, budgies might be okay, but you need to research the metal and all that stuff. I'd give it a four or five out of 10. If that means anything, I don't really know. It needs some help. Let's just put it that way. But um, for what it costs, I think it's fine. I will either be building a base for it, something like that. Metal flashing would have to go around the inside for the tortoise to spend the evenings in here. I don't know if I'm going to end up doing that because the floor space just isn't as big as what I thought. And I think Colby would prefer to just come back in the house at nighttime where he can roam the house. I think that that would be better for him, but it's an option. If for some reason he had to be outside, I don't really know why that would happen, but have something here if I were to reinforce the sides. And so yeah, it's together, but that's, uh, that's where it ends. Not much else to do with it other than go to the hardware store and buy some materials to reinforce it and get a new locking mechanism on the front. And like I said, overall it's cute, kitschy for what it costs. I think it's not a terrible deal what you get with it. It wasn't horrible to assemble. Um, better than the videos I had seen from a few years ago where people were putting this together. So it looks like the company took some points and tried to improve on what people were saying were problems that did go together fairly easily. It just, did, it really felt the whole time like the whole thing was just gonna crack and crumble because of, you know, the quality, right? Yeah, it may not end up going over here because this area is very wet and very moist for parts of the day. So it'll need a lot of work before it could go. What is wrong with you? You're sitting in water. Really? Talk about a drama queen. Guess it's not down there far enough. Okay, I dug out a spot <laughs> so that can be more in contact with the water. Jeez, drama. Yeah, I feel really good about what got done. Some planting would have been fun to get done, but uh, this is what I had time to do this week and it was the most important stuff to get done. And here we are. And so that'll all be filled in sooner than later once the palm trees get here and everything, it'll all start to take shape and look better. And uh, I know I said I was gonna repot some things, but it rained, so now my soil's all wet and it's gonna start raining again and the cicadas are starting to get to the point where it's hurting my ears. So I guess uh, that's enough, got a lot done. Thanks for hanging out. Colby's going to be so excited to get over here and chew up all those weeds. Cannot wait to bring him outside. Comment down below, say hi, what's going on in your gardens, any fun projects. If you used one of these Paw Hut aviaries before, how long did it last you? I'll be keeping people posted and updated. I'm sure there will be plenty to say about it moving forward. Feeling good, things are happening. Alright, as always, hope everybody's doing well and a great day, great night, and things just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye. Bye.